Hello guys, tonight it's Manchester United versus Aston Villa at Old Trafford. It's the 8 o'clock kickoff tonight, so let's get into it. Let's cue that intro. Oh no, welcome back to Match Show Live and it's me, Dan, back again. And tonight it's Manchester United versus Aston Villa. It's the Boxing Day uh, games that are on today. There's quite a few early games. Um, I think there's like two or three and then we've. I think we're the late, late uh, uh, game today. So yeah, I kind of forgot this. I kind of forgot about the uh, Boxing Day games, to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, it's Manchester United versus Aston Villa at Old Trafford. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I've... Yeah, I have no idea. I've put Rashford in. Uh, I reckon Rashford might get the start instead of uh, Garnacho because I thought Garnacho, I don't know, he looks he looks a bit knackered, so I think he might get a rest. And then I think it will be Hoyland and Anthony up top with Fernandez. And I've gone with Mainu and Amrabat, but I've got a funny feeling he will go with McTominay, even though he was really poor last in the last game. Luke Shaw, obviously Varane. Evans and Delo. Uh, I think uh, I, I believe uh, Eric Ten Hag said that uh, Varane should be back for this game, so uh, he should pl probably play with Evans or with uh, the young Willie Kambala. I think his name is second name. Um, he's not in the game, unfortunately, uh, but he played at the weekend against West Ham, um, and obviously we've got Evans, Delo, and Onana in net. So let's get into it. Let's play match. Let's talk about that last league result. Uh, which was a 2-0 2 nil loss to West Ham. Um, to be honest, it was a poor game. Uh, it was a poor game and then it's just a bit of excellence from one of, uh, you know, the two, um, one of uh, West Ham's good players and, you know, uh, not much really happened apart from, you know, Anana made some really good saves in that first half. Um, but it was more the Garnacho chance in the first half where Garnacho... Uh, was put through, was, I think it was a West Ham poor pass. It fell to Anthony. Anthony had the... Yeah, Anthony had the... Uh, Anthony had the uh, uh, ball and he had a great pass on to, what's his name, to Garnacho. And then Garnacho, it's a great chance. How he's not scored, I do not know. It's just where this team is lacking in, you know, lacking in that... Um, we are just lacking in that uh, situation where we are just literally... I, I, I literally just can't answer. We are, I just can't answer because I literally don't know what's happening at United at the moment. It just seems like nothing is going our way. And uh, I don't know. It's, it is a bit of a weird one. It is a bit of a weird one. Um, so... Yeah, it was a bit of a weird one. So finished half time nil nil, but yeah, that first half uh, and uh, Garnacho should have scored. Simple as you know, he should have scored. Simple as. And apart from that, you know, apart from a couple of saves from Onana from West Ham, it was a it was a poor first half, uh, really. And then the game didn't come alive until like the second half where. Um, they put a good, I think it was Paqueta through to Bowen, and then he's a great first touch. Um, it hits the goalkeeper, then it hits him, he kind of forces it in. Um, so then that was 1 0, and then a mistake from Kobe Mainu literally 5 10 minutes later. He let the ball uh, run underneath his feet, and uh, he went, um, the pass went through to Mohamed Kudus, and obviously Kudus at the moment he is scoring for fun, so. Yeah, uh, it's a bit of a. It was, you know, okay. It's, it was poor from Mainu, but you know, um, we can't do anything about it. And it was that was pretty much it. Two 0 You know, Anana made another good save from Bone as well from a header. But apart from that, United was so poor. Um, it was good to see Ericsson come back into the game. He came on at half. I think he came on in the second half, if I remember correctly. Um, so it's nice to see him back. So he could, he he might play this game against. Uh, Aston Villa, but if uh, Ten Hag, if Ten Hag was, you know, if Ten Hag was <laughs> wanted to save his future, um, he definitely needs to do something because obviously, obviously Aston Villa, uh, they played on Friday night, I think. Uh, was it Friday? Uh, yeah, they they uh, they drew Sheffield United, but they should have won. Oh, well, they should have won that game, shouldn't they? Really, the amount of chances they had. Um, but yeah, it was it was one of them games. 
it was one of them games against West Ham. It didn't seem like anything was going to happen. And all of a sudden, you know, they got a goal from out of nothing. And then we just, we were just poor after that. You know, we was poor and we let ourselves down. And uh, I don't know, it just, nothing seems to be working. And obviously, um, from that West Ham game, we finally got the confirmation about Sir Jim Ratcliffe uh, on Christmas Eve of all times to get it as well. Bit of a weird, a bit of a weird one that has come out. Um, so obviously, uh, he has got his. Well, he's, he's going to acquire. Um, they, you know, the confirmation from Manchester United. He's going to acquire due to, uh, you know, uh, I think it's like 1.3 billion. And um, I think he's got A shares, B shares. Well, I, I don't know. I don't really get it, to be honest. Um, it was, you know, it's, it was uh, it was a bit of a weird one to find that out on, uh, on Christmas Eve. And, you know, it wasn't the best time because obviously, uh, you know, uh, it's Christmas Eve and obviously it was a Sunday. And I, I don't know, it's a bit of a weird one. Um, so obviously, you know what? It's yeah, you know, it's good news. Okay, it's good news that the money's come in and he's gonna, you know, help uh, run the football side, which is uh, I still don't know how he's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen somehow. Uh, um, I don't understand it. Even the you know, um, you know, even on uh, people on Sky Sports, you know, kind of, uh, like journalists don't know how he's gonna run it, but. Let's see. It looks like um, that cyclist guy, so uh, David Bra Brailsford or something like that, isn't it? So Dave Brailsford or something. He's going to be uh, becoming a person who's going to he's going to be uh, running United, and uh, apparently there's that French uh, bloke who's going to be the CEO, and apparently there's talk of Paul Mitchell becoming our sport director as well. Let's see what happens. Obviously, we still got to wait for the Premier League approval, but. Um, you know, it's finally, it's nice that it's finally over with. Um, but we, let's just see what happens. You know, he said that he was going to buy out the Glazers. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's just going to be one of the. He's get. I don't think much is going to happen. I reckon he's going to do like he said. He's going to spend that three hundred million on the stadium and uh, on Carrington. And I think that's basically it. I think we don't hear anything, which is bad news for United. And obviously. Uh, the supporters trust as well came out and said, you know, uh, why are the Glazers still there? You know, are you going to promise that you get rid of the Glazers? I mean, you know, if he buys out the Glazers, good, fair enough. But um, I still think we needed more than Sir Jim Ratcliffe. And I hate to say it, but, I, you know, I think, you know, to be state owned by Qatar as well is a bit of a bit of bad situation. So I kind of... I kind of agree that we haven't got Qatar. Yeah, I'm kind of glad that we haven't got Qatar, but it might come down the line that we might need more money because, <laughs> you know, we've got, what is it, 800 million in debt. And I can't see to Jim Ratcliffe, you know, uh, buying, you know, paying off that debt because obviously it's the Glazers' debt put on the club. And um, I believe to Jim Ratcliffe, I think the best thing that they've done, uh, Ineos, is they've. Uh, they haven't, you know, they've bought, they, they've bought the club on loan, but they haven't put it on, they haven't put the debt on to uh, Manchester United. They've put it on a company run by Sir Jim Ratcliffe. So, well, Ireland and Man Sir Jim Ratcliffe or something. That was nice to uh, read. So that's one good thing out of it, I guess. Um, let's see what happens, obviously, with the football inside. Obviously, um, we've got Sir T we've got Ten Hag, who's going to be watched, obviously, as well, you know, New people are coming in. Are they going to want to keep Eric Ten Hag? I expect they will, because obviously he is a manager. But um, let's see, because obviously at the moment we're not winning. And some of the stuff that he's coming out with as well is ridiculous. Apparently we had a really solid performance against West Ham. I don't think we did. I think it was a poor performance from West Ham. He is becoming, you know, he's, he is saying things to protect himself. And it's not looking good for him. And especially... If we lose tonight against Aston Villa, obviously themselves, um, they are in good form at the moment. They are one of the teams on form. And, you know, Unai, Unai Emery has got them playing. Um, so it is going to be a hard game. It is going to be a hard game for Manchester United. And, you know, they're going to play for that counter-attack as well, which we know with Diaby and Watkins and uh, all that. So they're going to be, you know, they're going to be up for it. And, you know, if they beat... Uh, 
Manchester United. Obviously, we do have a good uh, Boxing Day record, and I don't think we haven't lost in a, lost on a Boxing Day, which is uh, for a while. So that's kind of a good thing, but then it's kind of a bad thing as well. I mean, if we could beat Aston Villa, that would uh, that would be nice. But uh, I don't know. I've got a funny feeling it's going to be an Aston Villa win, unfortunately. Um, and then obviously at the weekend, I think we do have Forest, don't we? Yeah, we've got a half five Forest. So that's going to be a hard game because obviously it's at their place. You know, they just got a new manager as well. Um, so it is going to be a hard game. It is going to be a hard game. But if we can, I don't know, if, if we can put a good result in, that would be great. But I've got a funny feeling it's going to be the same performance like like the one against West Ham where, you know, the West Ham have most of the chances. You know, Onana made some really good saves in that game. But it's going to be one of them, I think. And if, you know, it could be 1-0, 2-0 at half time. If it's 1-0, 2-0 at time, then it is going to be one. It is, it's, you know, there is going to be... Uh, there's going to be uh, booze at Old Trafford and you don't like to see that and I don't know I don't know I seriously don't know so for this game for the score prediction I think I I would love a Manchester United win I mean I take a draw against Aston Villa at the moment but I just all I can see is a draw or a Villa win I'll be very surprised if we win this game. I'll be very, very surprised if we win this game. But let's see. Let's see. So, score prediction. Do you know what? I'm going to go 1-1. I think well, I think we'll, you know, we'll... I think we will get a goal eventually because we haven't scored in, like, four games, which is a bit annoying as well. If we get a goal, you know, we just get a goal and I think we'll get a load of goals in this game. I think there will be goals. I think it's going to be, like, 2-2, something like that. So... That's my score prediction, but I just hope Manchester... You know, I'd like, I'd love a 3-0 victory against Villa, but I just can't see it at the moment, the way we're playing, and I don't know. I'm not too sure. So anyway, guys, that is going to be it for today, so please like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to leave your score prediction below. So right, guys, I'm going. Bye.